All right, quick headlines now. The mastermind behind 9-11 attacks, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, writing a letter to President Obama, reportedly complaining about Muslim oppression by the U.S. The letter delivered to the White House after being held at Gitmo for two years. Mohammed uh, KSM is awaiting the death penalty, and we all can't wait for that day. And the millions, the Million Women's March to unite women against President-elect Donald Trump isn't as inclusive as you might think. The pro-life group, New Wave Feminists, booted as an event partner. Pro-choice protesters saying their type of feminism violates the march's unity values, close quote. Next hour, we're going to talk to a New Wave member to get her response. 24 minutes now after the hour. They wouldn't allow them to join in because they're not... By definition, feminist. Right. There were okay. so many quotes in that lead. I felt like <laughs> I should have been doing this. <laughs> we should have had you on camera. Uh, well, the White House is announcing that President Obama has commuted Chelsea Manning's 35-year prison sentence for leaking classified documents. Now the former Army intelligence analyst is set to be released in May on May 17th. Here to weigh in is Fox News contributor Army veteran Pete Hexeth, who fought in Afghanistan and in Iraq. This intelligence dump directly affected the men and women you fought with. As you pointed out, it is a do document dump that Osama bin Laden himself sought because of how document rich it was. Dossiers on the entire Afghan war, the Iraq war, our strategy, our collaboration with allies. He read through it because he wanted to understand what we were doing and how to counter it. How, what, what more can you say about treason and giving directly to the enemy something they can use against us and harms men and women on the battlefield? I mean, this guy's a traitor. He was sentenced to 35 years. He should serve every single minute of it. Uh, but it's actually perfectly telling of he Barack Obama. He pled down for 35 years. Yeah, no, it's perfectly telling of Barack Obama. So it, he checks a lot of uh, social boxes, transgender now, not Bradley anymore, now Chelsea, a cause celeb of the left, and uh, who said he did it because he was troubled when he was in Iraq. Uh, and it's just the lawlessness so you that's why President Obama is giving him a pass. It's, it's like a nice, cozy cause for him. Hey, let's help out Chelsea and WikiLeaks. It's all fine. Release all whatever you want. America, you know. Mike Baker this morning was on Fox, and he's an ex CIA agent. And he said that this guy, or this girl, I should say, is responsible for the death of Americans by releasing information about our military to other countries. Of course. I mean, I wouldn't release one document, let alone 700,000, and he did it because he wanted to expose supposed war crimes. As you said, some fuzzy videos, some difficult situations where our guys make decisions on a split second. He's indicting them in the court of public opinion, making the wars more difficult to prosecute. By the way, it raised the profile of WikiLeaks. We didn't even know what it was. It caused irreparable damage to Hillary Clinton's uh, State Department. She had to go around apologizing for all the uh, the stuff yeah. that was said behind closed doors that we didn't even want our allies well, to know. We never, here's what Carol, uh, here's what Catherine Harridge reported. Uh, after two intelligence sources confirmed to her that after the Afghan war diaries released these incident reports uh, in 2010, the Taliban went on a killing spree, taking out everyone who seemed to fit the description That's of me. individuals who were working with the U.S. Exactly. Taking it, by the way, anyone very with brown hair. Anyone why, with brown hair. Why would you want to work with us? I mean, when we're going to expose you eventually. You're dead. I saw it in Iraq when a guy was uh, that we were working with was exposed. He was dead. Uh, it's it's it, it, these are not this is not play games Why? here. These are people's what lives. Was, what was her motive? Why did she release all this information? Well, she when, was when, he, when when he was depressed at the a time about gender depressed. dysphoria, didn't know who he was, was didn't want to be in Iraq, so decides um, I'm just going to release 700,000 documents. There's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for caveat in the military code. No, I mean apparently not. Uh, they wanted to make a make a make a statement about transparency while killing fellow soldiers and allies in the process. All right. Thank you. Thank you Thank for your you. service, too. Coming up, more of the exclusive interview with President-elect Donald Trump. I ask you about your speech, the inauguration speech. Have you prepared your speech? Have you yes. practiced? What's the first line? The answer to that question in my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Donald Trump. Plus, our next guest is taking TV and the Internet by storm. 68 in Raleigh. And where I live, Liberty, it's going to be 63. <laughs> Local weather kid Charlie Warren is here tracking the forecast with Janice Dean. Her job is threatened, but she smiles through it. Uh, but first, we're going to say happy birthday to Jason Siegel. He is the actor that turns 37 years old today. Right. Happy birthday. I know you're watching. Well, the inauguration just two days away, and we've got an exclusive interview with our next commander-in-chief. Well, she did. Well, Ainsley visited the 25th floor of the Trump Tower uh, to talk about the big day. Is that true, Ainsley? That is absolutely true. You want to listen? If you have time. All right, here we go. 
Oh, Donald Trump is about to become the 45th president of the United States. There was more on the prompter. So what's the first thing on his to-do list? We asked him that question, and we asked him a lot more in the exclusive sit-down. Listen. President-elect Trump, thank you so much for meeting with us today. Thank you. Exciting week for you. What's the first yes. thing you're going to do when you walk into the White House? Well, I want to go to work. Uh, Monday is uh, really the day that we start signing and working and making great deals for the country. I know Melania and your son are going to stay here in New York until he finishes school at yes. least. Will they be there with you Friday night, oh, yeah. your first night in the White House? Will your whole family oh, be yeah. there? My whole family is going to be in the White House. Uh, Barron and Melania and my, all of my children uh, will be in the White House, which is sort of a tradition. They say the first night you have your family there, but Ivanka, Don, Eric, Tiffany, they're all going to be in the White House, and it'll be very exciting. There's something very special about that building. Every time you walk in it, it's just something so incredible about the White House. Uh, not many people get the opportunity to no, say they are the no, president of the United States of no. America. It's very humbling, I will tell you. I'm sure. Do you think about your parents? I do. My parents were great. I had great parents and loving parents. And my father was a strong guy. Actually, my mother was at least equally as strong, but a lot of people didn't quite understand that. But she was strong, but good, both good, great hearts and great parents. I want to ask you about your speech, the inauguration speech. Have you prepared your speech? Have you yes. practiced? What's the first line? Well, I have prepared it. Uh, well, the first line is thanking everybody, all of the presidents, and uh, including, by the way, President Obama and Michelle, who have been absolutely nice. Uh, Melania has spent time with Michelle, and it was great. And Ivanka the other day spoke to her. The conversation was going to be a quick conversation. It lasted an hour. And they got along great. And uh, so I, I'm just thanking President Obama. I'm thanking his very lovely wife because they have been so gracious. We're going to have a tremendous turnout. I think it's going to be, from what I'm hearing, the numbers are going to be astronomical. There are some congressmen and women who have decided not to show up and not be there. What was your reaction when Congressman Lewis started this? Well, what he said is that he's never done it before, but he has. And, uh, you know, he, he has done it before because he did it with, with President Bush 43 and he did it on the same basis he said oh, he is not our president or something thereabouts and that's a very bad misrepresentation so let's see what happens as far as other people not going that's okay because we need seats so badly mm -hmm. I people... hope they give me their tickets are they going to give us their tickets <laughs> okay or are they going to give going. them to other people no, what happens to their tickets? I hope they're going to give us their tickets. What about these celebrities who are now pulling out? Uh, uh, many of the celebrities that are saying they're not going, they were never invited. Well, I don't want the celebrities, I want the people. And we have the biggest celebrities in the world there. The you, biggest in the world. You. Well, I won't say that. <laughs> but we have the biggest at President Obama. How about these designers that President are saying Obama. they don't want to dress your wife? She's not, did she even ask Tom Ford? Uh, never asked Tom Ford. Uh, doesn't like Tom Ford. Doesn't like his designs. Tom Ford is an example. I will not dress the first lady. He was never asked to dress. And Steve Wynn just called me, and he said he thought it was so terrible what Tom Ford said that he threw his clothing out of his Las Vegas hotel. Uh, I'm not a fan of Tom Ford. Never have been. I heard this. smaller parade, fewer balls. Why is that? Well, they had many balls. They had like 10, 12 balls, and we had that scheduled. And you know, we, we have one ball, I think it's 25,000 people, and they're going to be bigger. But I, who wants to have like 10 different balls? So we did fewer. Everything's sold out. You can't get a ticket. But in fact, my biggest problem is you can't get tickets to any of this stuff. It's, it's impossible. Uh, I was told some of the dress shops in Washington, uh, they, you can't get a dress anymore. It's like, they're just, it's just going to be an amazing uh, weekend. It's okay. going to be something special. And you will have crowds like they have rarely seen before. What about Twitter? Um, are you going to continue to tweet? Yeah. Look, I don't like tweeting. I have other things I could be doing. <laughs> but I get very dishonest media, very dishonest press. And it's my only way that I can counteract. CIA John Brennan, he responded to your Twitter. You said you questioned whether or not he might be the leaker. He's saying, no, he's not the leaker. What's your response? Well, I accept his, look, I accept it. But it came out of some place, and it's fake news. It's all fake news. You know, I can say something about George Washington. I can say something about Abraham Lincoln. I can say something about you. I can just fake news. And they shouldn't have been a part of it. They should not have been a part of it because it's made up, never existed, never happened. 
And the reason I say that so strongly, because nothing's ever going to show up. There's never going to be a tape that shows up. There's never going to be anything that shows up. Now, I would be very embarrassed if a tape actually showed up saying something like that. It would be double embarrassed because I'm saying it. There is no tape. There is no event. I was never even in that room for that period of time. They made stuff up, and it started with the Republican Party when they tried to beat me in the nomination, and then it went on. The Democrats took over that work, supposedly, and by the intelligence giving it credence, a little bit of credence, by just even talking about it, it was very inappropriate. So I don't know who the leaker was. I have no idea, but it's fake news. Press briefing room. Are you going to move it? So we were going to move it because, for whatever reason, you'll have to explain this to me and everybody, but we get a lot of people showing up for press conferences, etc., including briefings. And the room is too small. So we said we're going to move it to a larger room in a nearby area, but, you know, not the same area. And the press went crazy, so I said, let's not move it. But some people in the press will not be able to get in because there's just too many. We'll make sure you get a seat. But there's too many people for this small room. Especially small nowadays room. with bloggers and with radio. You know, we have so many people that mm -hmm. want to go in and you know so we'll have to just pick the people that go into the room. I'm sure other people will be thrilled about that but we offered a much larger room because we need a much larger room mm -hmm. and we offered to do that but they went crazy and they'll be begging for a much larger room very soon. You watch. Did you see the impersonators that were standing in for you? They're in the military, the man and the woman, they were you and Melania. Oh. We, asked, we interviewed them this morning and we said, is there any advice you have for Mr. Trump? And he said, tell him to watch his step. Apparently he tripped going up Ooh, the stairs. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Yeah, he wouldn't be the first person to tell Donald Trump to watch his step. <laughs> now, we did learn that apparently uh, Ralph Lauren is actually going to be dressing Melania. Who wouldn't want that task? I mean, that, uh, she's a beautiful lady, and to have the opportunity to address the first lady, I think that would be such an honor, even if you don't agree with the politics. Great. Donald Trump, a one-on-one -on -one exclusive with him. Yeah, it was, it was great. He told me a lot of information, and we asked him right out of the gate about Congressman Lewis. Congressman Lewis says that he was boycotting, or is going to boycott the inauguration. Um, many other congressmen and women are actually going to join him on this. And when Donald Trump walked in the door, he said, how about this? He ended up lying. He said that he has never Never done this before. It turns out he has. Listen to this. Congressman Lewis is saying he doesn't. He didn't remember that he skipped yeah, that inauguration. He, he conveniently doesn't remember. How do you forget if you go to an inauguration? I can tell you when I was at the inaugurations, and uh, you don't forget something like that. So uh, he got caught, and it's pretty bad, and it's making him look bad. Frankly, it's a very important time. This is a transition and a very important transition, and especially because things will be done beautifully, but they'll be done differently than they have been over the past eight years. And I can say over the past 16 years, I mean, they'll be different. And, you know, we have to have a smooth transition. And President Obama understands that very well, and that's why he's been so gracious, but he understands that. And I think for him to have grandstanded, because I think he just grandstanded, uh, John Lewis and then he got caught in a very bad lie so let's see what happens as far as other people not going that's okay because we need seats so badly mm -hmm. I people... hope they give me their tickets are they going to give us their tickets <laughs> okay or are they going to give going. them to other people no what happens to their tickets? would you be willing to sit down with with Congressman Lewis sure I, I would be but you know it's just uh, we're off to a bad start there's no question about it what he did was a very very bad thing not for me for me, it doesn't matter. He did a bad thing for the country. Very, very divisive. We have a divided country. And it's not divided because of me. It's been divided. But we have a very divided country. And what he did was very, very divisive. Speaking of divisive, so far, 60 Democrats have said, you know what, we're not going to show up. And by the way, a lot of them, uh, Ainsley, are saying, and Steve, they're not, it's not even because of Lewis. They just don't like Donald Trump. It's up to 60. And among the, uh, among the outlets, uh, that says this is wrong to sit out the American process and it's anti-American to do so is the is the biggest uh, critic of Donald Trump outside maybe the New York Times, New York Daily News, in their editorial today. Yeah. So you might not like him, you uh, you may be disagree with him, but you have to show up. Great. So what's gonna so now from here on out, every time there's a Republican president, the Democrats shouldn't show up, and when there's a Democrat, the Republicans. Where? How do we get to this? This point? is extraordinary. Hillary Clinton's going to be there. I thought that was extremely classy of her. And every city. Sen 
senator. Every U.S. senator will be there from the most liberal to the most moderate. Every Democrat will be there. What is going on in the House? It is sure. just an excuse not to show up and raise some more money. Democrats should realize raising money doesn't win you elections. Well, didn't you learn anything from the last uh, last round? With Lewis, he said he didn't think that uh, Trump was a legitimate president. But then you've got a number of people who say, we don't like the way Russia helped Trump, you know, through WikiLeaks. They didn't like that. Wait till uh, the next.